Okay, in this video, I want to just show you um, how to basically make a bouncing ball um, inside of Adobe Flash. So we're going to do two different kinds. We're going to do uh, a frame-by-frame -frame animation, and we're going to do a, a tweened animation. So I'm going to start with the frame-by-frame. -frame. This is sort of what it's going to look like. But uh, on uh, the home page, when you uh, bring it up, let me close out of this, actually. So on this home page, you'll see something that looks like this. We're just going to start with HTML5 Canvas. Then well, the first thing I want you to do is I actually want you to come over here and uh, uh, we've got sort of an issue with the size, or at least I do. It defaults to 550 by 400. We want to make this HD. Um, I don't need to go all the way to 1920 by 1080 for this particular one, but I'm going to at least make it 1280 by 720. Um, and that will just make everything uh, a lot larger. That's sort of more what we want uh, here. And so now I have my stage that I can work with. It's going to be a little bit easier. So Adobe Animate is similar to other Adobe programs. We have like these palettes over here. We have the tools, which in this case happen to be on the left, but I could move them over to the right. Um, there are different layouts up here. I'm just going to leave it on essentials. Then we have our canvas. And then we have what's called the timeline. This is where we're going to put keyframes, which I'll talk more about as we go along. So the first thing that we need to do for a bouncing ball is to create a ball. So I'm going to come over here to the oval tool. So right here in the oval tool. And then I'm just going to make a circle, but I need to click it. If I hold down shift, it'll make sure that it's a, a perfect circle. So I'm going to hold down shift. Um, I can also change the color of this. I don't necessarily love that color. So let's uh, make something a little more bright like this green. So I have this ball here. And uh, I want you to notice down in my timeline, I have this little keyframe. There's a little dot here. That is really important for us to understand and to use uh, because that's that's how we're going to make changes to our animation. So I'm going to go down to, it's set to 24 frames per second. So I'm going to go down to frame 24 and I'm going to create a new keyframe. I'm going to insert a keyframe. Okay, Insert a keyframe. The shortcut key for this is actually F6. Okay, so I'm going to click on insert keyframe. I right clicked on that and then I click on insert keyframe. Well, I'm going to do the same thing uh, again over here. I'm going to go to frame 12. So I'm going to say halfway through the animation, uh, I'm going to make one more keyframe. So I hit F6 uh, on my keyboard. So I have now, I have the ball at the beginning, I have the ball in the middle, and the ball at the end. Well, it's not doing anything. Uh, yet, and so I need to make some changes to this so it actually does do something. So I'm going to go to frame 12, and at frame 12 is where I want it to hit the ground. So I'm going to drag it down so it just hits the ground. And so now I have up in the air, hits the ground, back up in the air. Well, at this last frame, it's probably not going to be quite as high as it was, so I'm going to make it a little bit lower. So it, it bounces up, but not, maybe not quite as high. So this is a good start, but it's not very realistic. If you hit the enter key, it will play through your animation. It just doesn't look very realistic. So what I need to do is now make frames in between all of these. So I'm going to go to frame 6 and hit F6. And I'm going to go to frame, uh, let's see, 18 here and hit F6. And so now I have frames in between. So this one should be about halfway between the ground and the top. And this keyframe should be about halfway between the ground and uh, where it ends up here. Well, this is kind of hard to see where that's ending up. So I'm going to turn on something that's really, really helpful called onion skinning. This little button at the very, very, very bottom of the timeline, right next to this loop uh, option, is called onion skinning. So, and the shortcut key is Option-Shift-O, but I'm going to just click onion skinning. 
And what this does is it allows me to see where it's been and where it's going. So I have onion skinning on so I can see on the left, this is where the ball was and this is where it's going. If I just click and drag this out, I can see this is where it's going, this is where it's been. So that makes it a little easier as I kind of go through here. Oh, okay, so I can see that this is where the ball was on this frame. It ends up here, which is where I'm at, and then uh, it's going to end up right over there. So I can just kind of go through these, and this one's supposed to be all the way to the bottom, so maybe I just missed that by just a little bit. There we go, if I zoom out just a little bit. So I can kind of see now. So now if I play through this, okay, it's getting a little bit better, but it's still kind of choppy. So I need to keep going and do more frames. So I'm gonna go in between these two, and I'm gonna hit F6, and I'm gonna click and drag it right in between. With onion skinning on, it makes it really easy. So I can go here, and hit F6, somewhere in between. Okay, let's go with that one and go in between those two and I'm just gonna keep going. And uh, let's see, I wanna move that over one frame. Drag this up halfway in between. And then drag this up halfway in between. Okay, so now I have quite a bit more frames. Okay, so now it's starting to look a little bit better, but we've got some problems. It does not look realistic. It's looking better, but it doesn't look very realistic. Balls don't bounce like that. So, <laughs> first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do squash and stretch. So I'm gonna click on this, and then I need to come over to this tool up in the top right called the free transform tool, free transform tool. So I click on this tool, and now I can actually squash this down a little bit so when it hits the ground, it should squash. Okay, so now if I play through this, squash. So it's looking a little bit better, but as it drops, it should stretch a little bit. This is one of the principles of animation, squash and stretch. So probably by here, I'm gonna start to stretch it just a little bit, not much, but just a little bit. By the time it hits here, it's getting a little bit more. And by the time it hits here, it's probably quite a bit stretched. Like it's picking up velocity, it's picking up speed. So it gets, so it picks up speed, it squashes. Well, okay, now we need to go back up. So now I need to, it needs to be squashed probably just a little bit, but not a ton. And then here, it's probably fine at a, at a regular circle. Then it's gonna start to stretch again, just a little bit. And so now if I play through this, the ball picks up speed and it bounces and comes back up. Okay. So that looks okay, I'm, I'm okay with that, but there's still something wrong with it. We've got two other principles of animation that we really need to add in. One is timing, and the other uh, is anticipation. <laughs> okay, the ball doesn't drop at a constant speed like it's doing right now, right? A ball is going to pick up speed. So that means the objects or the keyframes here need to be a lot closer to the top and then it starts to pick up speed as it goes. So then it can probably be here and then it hits and then it's gonna sort of do the same thing on its way up. It kind of doesn't bounce up quite as fast. Okay, and then as it starts to stretch and then it gets to the top and it kind of pauses. So we kind of play through that and now it's looking a little bit better. Now what I could do is I could keep going and add more keyframes, um, which would be great. For our purposes, this is all I'm going to do today. Um, but that is the frame by frame portion of the bouncing ball.